You have to look at levels that are going to be less sexy than the social media crowd. Less sexy, sexy, dare I say it, from the world bet by Wall Street Bets crowd. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessTrader.com weekend update show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Uh, a lot of stuff going on uh, in the markets, but the, the theme continues to be bull market, very, very aggressive, uh, speculation money all over the place, uh, euphoric markets. And there's something I, I, I learned this week uh, actually, not this week. I, I learned on Friday, I believe. I never heard of the word or, or the, the website Wall Street Bets. I, I, I've never heard about it in my life. And everybody kept on talking about how Wall Street Bets is like the, the Robin Hood, whatever the hell they are. They, they run up stocks. And they, oh, I kept on saying myself. So I actually went on the website. And it's like, it's like a, for all you guys who don't know, maybe I'm the only one who, who doesn't. Which is found now, but it's it's a message board. It's like it's literally people posting, and apparently, um, you know, this is like the, the the next driving force behind speculation capital. Which, when you hear about it for the first time, you say to yourself, "This is just you know absolutely doesn't even make sense." When people are posting on message boards, getting together because you know and running up a stop. Think about this for a second. And again, maybe it's true, maybe it's not. But 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 think about it for a second. Who is on these message boards, right? There's nobody there with any big significant buying power. These are pretty much small retail traders who are, you know, trading dollar, two dollar, three dollar stocks, and they're all, you know, buying a hundred, five hundred thousand shares of these things, and they're making a little bit of moves. So, so the idea that uh, a message board or the Robinhood crowd is 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 really running up stocks is is, in my opinion, a, a little bit a little bit crazy. And I understand there's so many retail investors and they all jump on the same thing at the same time. But think about this, there's also institutional money flow. And if institutional money flow is a seller, I don't care how many people join forces together, you get one seller in the crowd and every every single one of these um, well, Robin Hooders slash uh, Wall Street bet guides, they, they're going to get stuffed every single time. So listen, is there some sort of truth behind this? Maybe, maybe certain stocks, maybe a $2 stock, a $3 stock, whatever the case may be. But when you start getting into higher priced stocks, it's very, very hard for me to believe that a Tesla move is retail oriented or a move, for example, uh, like a, G, a, a GameStop. And I think this was one of the, the more, more interesting uh, of the moves uh, for the week. For, for all you guys who don't know what GameStop is, um, they're a brick and mortar, primarily brick and mortar, uh, video game buy, sell, trade in. I'm sure they have a, some sort of online presence. This is kind of like the video game version of Blockbuster, right? Blockbuster video for all you guys who are not old enough to understand this. They were a brick and mortar. They used to rent out uh, um, DVDs and video cassettes and some video, uh, video games at the same time. And they kind of went out of business. And there was a monster short squeeze on GME. Uh, this, is, this has been a company, just to kind of paint a picture. This has been a company that number one, everybody knows that the, the video game industry is all online, streaming, whatever the case may be. So there's never a doubt in anybody's mind who actually understands the brick and mortar business that this stock or this company is going to survive if they don't go eventually 100% digital, 100% streaming, just like so many other platforms. And I, I think a lot of people got this wrong. Um, you know, a lot of people saw GameStop had a big, big move. And then for you guys uh, who, who, who are on social media, you know, you kind of saw Citron come out and, you know, they, they had their quote unquote research piece and they basically said, hey, by the way, you got to be out of your mind. The stock is going, uh, is going back to 20, it's going back to 10, whatever the case may be. And the one thing I've, I, I've never seen, I, I, I've absolutely never seen uh, since I've been uh, doing this for a living from the, from the original uh, you know, you have to sit on a desk, trade with other traders, the kind of where the social media, uh, you know, generation is now that, you know, that your social leverage is kind of your currency. You know, say what you want about Citron, right? A lot of people think what they do is a little bit unethical. There's nothing illegal what they do, okay? They are making their research report and then releasing it uh, to the public. Again, that's a whole different conversation, morality versus legality. It's legal, 
It just might not be more. We'll get to that in a second. But the craziest part, what I, what I, what I saw in, in my 21 years in, in my life, I've never saw this. Um, and a lot of people will, will make a case. Well, this was the Reddit crowd. They ran it up. Let me tell you what I think is going to happen. Number one, uh, Andrew Left, who runs uh, Citron, he came out and said, we are giving, um, I believe it was a $20 target for GME. And they, you know, they started hitting down. Uh, they started hitting down GME, and obviously in any market that is sophisticated with dip buyers, it has no fear they're going to drive up the stock. And then he went a couple of days later, he started making the rounds from social media platform to platform to platform to platform to platform, to platform spilling his case of why the stock goes to, goes to $20. And then he made the most insane statement that I, I think I've heard in about 20 years. He came out and said, hey guys, by the way, this stock is completely easy to borrow and anybody can feel free to short it. I'm paraphrasing. And that just basically opened up the doors. So if guys with big capital behind them, right, a lot of buying power behind them, whether they're uh, retail or hedge fund or pension, whatever the case may be, once they, you made that statement, then hey, by the way, I'm short a huge position in the stock. Hey, by the way, it's easy to borrow. With my comments on every single social platform, I'm going to entice retail investors to come join me on what, what I believe is going to be a, a crash back into the 20s, back into the teens. They just opened up Pandora's box. And once the stock did not go down after he was making rounds over and over again, there has been a lot of talk, and this is, this is unconfirmed, obviously. A lot of people just turn around and say, well, wait a minute. We're in a massive bull market. This thing has a massive short interest. There's just the next round of shorts. This guy is stuck in a short. He's telling everybody you're short. It, the easier play is to squeeze him back out. And what I saw Friday was probably the most aggressive squeeze uh, that I can remember in a very, very long time. You know, the Tilray's of the world, uh, some of the other, other names in years ago. But this was an, an absolute catastrophe. If, if, and this is why, again, guys, you, you don't jump in when somebody on social media tells you to jump, okay? The word research all of a sudden gets validated when somebody has an opinion. I could turn around and say, hey, guys, I'm, I'm, I like IBM as a long. I like IBM as a short. Nobody cares. Somebody comes out with the word research, right, attached to their title, and this opens up Pandora's box for all the emotional traders to jump in, the, you know, the retail traders to jump in without even understanding what the, the ramification is going to happen. And Friday, this was just an absolute destruction. And 24 hours, and this is the craziest part, 24 hours after the guy came out and said this, you know, to, to anybody who would give him a, an ear to a platform to, <laughs> to kind of convey his message, 24 hours later, they said, um, you know, we've changed our policies. We're not going to discuss our short positions anymore. I mean, I could have told you that. I tweeted that out the same day. I said, look, I'm not the sharpest uh, tool in the shed. But even I know not to tell everybody how, how much of a short position I have, how much exposure I have, and oh, by the way, how easy it is to borrow. So guys, if you are a, a social media uh, jump you know, and, and react, an emotional trader, just trust me, do your homework. No, it doesn't make a difference how much regard you have somebody uh, in your mind. Always do the research. Always do the, you know, do the, uh, you know, have a feasibility study that your account is not in jeopardy. Because not only did the people who got fresh shorts got killed in this thing, you know, fresh longs got killed in this thing as well, chasing this thing uh, to $75, $77 as well. So be careful, folks. Again, at the end of the day, no matter what happens in the market, bull, bear, or indifferent, okay, bull markets come, bear markets go. But your process, your absolute process is the most important part that's going to stay with you until you choose not to do this anymore for a living. And it's very, very important. And, and, and this is one of those markets that anything is possible and everything is possible and everything becomes, uh, everything comes into fruition because this is a snowball effect of euphoria, uh, stimulus money coming into the market, uh, people unfortunately losing their jobs and their livelihoods turning into the financial markets to kind of compensate. So you're getting a tremendous snowball of very, very aggressive, emotional, emotional aggress, uh, aggressive new breed of quote unquote trader. And unfortunately, one day it's all going to end. But again, unfortunately, take your money now 
and hopefully you can hang on to it a little bit later. Uh, other than that, what are you going to say about the market, right? It's an incredible market. Um, you know, what are we going to do? Break down how strong the market is? It's strong. You know, everything's at all-time highs. Uh, the key right now and continue to be uh, is wait for is wait for uh, stocks to come out of channels. Look for value. The biggest key, uh, the biggest takeaway I had from two, 2020 to where I am right now in 2021 and 2000. Excuse me, in 2000, I didn't believe that the internet craze was going to end. Wah, wah, wah. It ended, right? It ended, and it took a piece of my life with it. Okay, so that's the difference where I am right now. I don't look at this as a lottery ticket. I, don't, I stopped looking at this as just some magical uh, time of my life. For what one person looks at as the greatest market of all time, I might look at it as a Monday. When somebody turns around and says, this is the most life-changing market of all time, it's a random Wednesday. And not because of the dollars and cents, because some of us have been doing this for 20, 15, 20, 25 years. This is business as usual. If anybody's been doing this for 15, 20, 25 months, this is your ability to kind of quote unquote change your life. So take it for what it's worth. You know, one day at a time, uh, one trade at a time, and the value in this tape continues to be stocks that are coming out of a bottom. And somebody would turn around and say, how can you, you know, where, where are these bottom stocks? There's plenty around. The fact that uh, beta went sideways for two months and didn't do anything gave a lot of value. Matter of fact, if you look at the tape this week with a 4% move uh, in the NASDAQ, you can see where the big, you know, volume came in. If you've been watching this kind of, uh, this broadcast for the last week, you saw the value. You know, Amazon coming out of the bottom of the range. Uh, NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA came out of the bottom of the range. Facebook, and we'll get to these pivots, especially uh, on Friday in a second. Facebook came out of the range. Apple, right, came out of the range. And it's not just beta. If you look at the biggest moves on Friday, for every one of these CCIV monster movers, and again, right, this is the euphoria. But for every big stock that people are chasing from $10 to 23 there is a PLTR, right? There is a PLTR, and look at the common denominator. It came out of the bottom of the range. If you look at a FUBU or FOBO or whatever the hell it's called, right? The value is not up here because, again, ask the people up here what happened to their capital, right? When they chased, they all got killed. The value is coming out of these two channels. And, again, we'll get to the pivots in a second. But that's where the value is. You could still get a lot of value in this market, but you have to put in the work. Anything that ran up 15, 20, 50%, 150%. Yeah, of course you can make money and you can get lucky, but that money was is likely going to be taken away from you when the carnage begins. And the carnage starts with contracting channels, buyers get tired, and they start jumping into something new, and slowly but surely it starts a domino effect. So you want to stay safe. Remember, there's only one breakout per interval. Everything else is continuation. So for example, on a FUBU, right, on a FUBU, the breakout at this level was right around here, right? This uh, 32.73. At $60, you're a fool, right? If you bought the dip at 55, you're a fool. Just because, not because the stock is cheaper at 55 than it was at 65, but the stock broke out of $32, right? Broke out of this uh, $32 level, and look where the stock found its support, right? Found its floor. So you have to look at levels that are going to be less sexy than the social media crowd. Less sexy, sexy dare I say it, from the Wall, bet, uh, Wall Street bets crowd. Again, I've only learned about this name just Friday. Imagine, uh, uh, imagine, imagine just a message board controlling the market. Anyway, so that's where the value is. And if you are doing your research for this weekend and you go through charts, you'll see a lot of names that potentially could wake up again. Uh, Zoom, right? Zoom had a really, really big run consolidating, held the bottom of the channel. It, it, more, most people are not going to turn around and say, wow, this is a great looking chart. But for me, this is a good looking chart. Maybe not here, maybe not today, maybe not Monday, but there's a channel that I'm watching be, you know, before this area here that could be a beneficial firecracker, fire starter to the name. Uh, a name like Tesla that everybody's watching at the top of the range here, there is a channel, right, at the 60-minute view that I'm watching before you know, the quote-unquote uh, retail public starts to even realize what's going on. So there's a lot of value still in this tape, but you have to put in the work. You can't just be 
Uh, you know, you can't just be um, in the mindset that it's a bull market, I could buy it at any price, and I will be rewarded. That's false. A name like Beyond uh, could wake up again, right? It had a really, really big run, then it got downgraded to a sell, and again, it's, look at, look at it, the, the range is setting up. It, it may be not obvious to a lot of people, but there is some value there. Then will these stocks go before they report their earnings? Maybe, maybe not, we don't know, but the most important part is do your research. I, I, I did my research today for about two hours, uh, I usually get my chart work done in about 45 minutes. I went through a lot of charts. I could have easily, easily put on 30 stocks to watch for Monday. But, but the problem is, and, and this is kind of a common occurrence, and you speak, see a lot of uh, new traders fall victim to this. So, they watch everything, right? This one looks great. That one looks great. This is, I have 10 stocks in front of me. Everything looks great now. That's the point. Everything looks so good and everything looks like it, it could put up that 50% candle and 100% candle. The problem is when you're watching everything, you're going to miss everything. Okay. Uh, take whatever your process is, whether you're trading pivots with me or you're trading futures or you're trading small caps, make whatever the case may be, whatever your drug of choice is, and narrow your, your, trade, your, your trade search and trade setups uh, to names that, number one, have a channel that haven't come out of this channel yet, they're waiting to confirm this channel. Because remember, the, the longer the distribution in a channel, the higher probability it's gonna move and move very, very aggressively. That's why stocks like FUBU and PLTR and all these names had really big moves in the last 24 hours because they're coming out of really, really long distribution. And stop, you know, stop chasing psychological subconscious performance. You don't, you know, it doesn't make a difference. If you missed PLTR at 28 on Friday, don't pay $48 for it next week, right? If you miss FUBU at 33, at 34, at 36, don't pay $45 for it for next week. It's very, very important that you take the names that haven't gone yet, right? Put them in front of you, and those should be your concentration points. Because, if, again, if you are looking at everything, everything in the market that already went, subconsciously what you're doing is you're trying to, to chase and emulate past performance of the opportunities that you already missed. All of us do that. Okay? It's very, very common. But if you do put the blinders on and you do concentrate, there's a lot of value still in this market, uh, especially before the mega uh, mega caps report uh, this week and the following week. Following week is, is a lot more names as well. But there is still a lot of meat in this, in this market. And if you are looking at the right places, you could definitely identify it and curbing your risk uh, at the same time. So uh, let's talk about Friday's session. Uh, you, you had some really, really big movers. You really did. Um, this week, Netflix did a great job. Uh, we talked about this uh, a couple of videos ago. You, you know, you had great subscriber numbers. Uh, I believe they talked about a potential of a buyback. But the most important part, because of that $90, $95 move, you know, the stock was dead. It was dead for a long, long time. And now it's kind of consolidating this $95 move. It had a couple of days... Um, it had a couple of days that it kind of did anything. It actually caught me for $2.50 on Friday. I, I was actually very surprised that Friday uh, Netflix didn't rally. Um, I, I, bought, I bought it on a red to green second entry move. It ran up about $1.50, $1.70. I'm talking about in seconds. And then two seconds later, I lost like $2.50 on the bottom of the range. And then it wound up going down like $7, $9. I still like it, but it's just very, very odd that it didn't. Uh, that it didn't really go aggressive on Friday. But more important, it did wake up the stocks. And we had some massive pivots this week on Amazons and uh, NVIDIA. NVIDIA continues to be my, uh, my number one stock for, for the start of 2021. I have no idea why, but it's been great on the long side. Uh, it's been great on the short side. It's just been great. Now, uh, earnings will obviously be a catalyst. But if you look at Friday's session, uh, very aggressive. Again, just this, that's kind of the mantra for 20, 000, uh, 2020, 2021 to start. Uh, very aggressive names coming out of channels. And you, again, the common denominator is looking for value. So let's talk about this. Uh, CRM, not a big move. I, I, this should have been a bigger move. Uh, CRM was at the bottom of the range, right? CRM was at the bottom of the range. Um, they got upgraded by Goldman Sachs. They had a perfect chart. Um, you know, we talked about 125, 225, 75, 226 for a possible move, and it did that, right? I mean, it, it just it had the move, right? Uh, 226. It went to uh, 228. I'm, I am kind of surprised that it didn't reclaim that 228, especially how strong a lot of names were and, and made a move to 231. But again, if you look at the price to action, it, it did kind of stop uh, at su supply. So if you did take a good job there, 
Facebook was a monster, uh, 273, 75, 274. Again, look at the common denominator. Facebook wasn't coming out of this monster channel. Facebook was reclaiming the 50-day moving average. So Thursday, it stopped at the 50-day. Friday, it took out that uh, 273.75 area. And the stock traded almost 279, really, really big move. That, that's where you want to look at stocks that are coming out of uh, middle channels. Netflix, this is where I lost some money on Netflix. Uh, space 34, quick scalp on Space 34 needs to build. I still like Space. I do. I still like space. Uh, here's the $34 channel. It, again, it wasn't a big move. That's the whole point. We, we knew it wasn't going to be a big move because there, there was supply here uh, in the $34.50. It was just a quick move. But now it's actually definitely setting up uh, for this higher prices uh, for this week. FUBU, I miss FUBU. I was at lunch. I, I was at lunch. For the hour that I was gone for lunch, uh, FUBU went from $36, $36.20 and just absolutely exploded. Right, so here was the 36.20, came out of the sneaky channel here and put in a high of roughly 38. Right, we talk about value. Here is the value. It's not up here. The value is up here. So, and again, I still like this the, the stock for higher prices. The big range is going to be right here uh, off this 41.50 level. As you can see here, it got rejected several times, but there is definitely a pivot uh, before that. Um, NVIDIA never got to 560. AMD, great call by Ivan in the webinar. 9420 rejected twice. Uh, needs to reclaim. Here was AMD. And you can see why I said 9420 uh, is a big number. Uh, here was 9420. 9420. Oops, I'm sorry. I knew it looked crazy. AMD, I'm sorry. I typed in uh, Amazon. Right, so here is uh, here is 9420. You see that 9420 got rejected once. 9420 got rejected twice. Uh, once it got above that 9420, huge huge move to 96 uh, for AMD. Uh, NNOX uh, never got to 70. I kind of like it. I still like this uh, chart on NNOX. Got rejected off the 69 level. Uh, LU never got to 1660. I still like it. I'm still watching it for this week. Uh, CRM new highs. FUV. FUV, you know, there's certain names in, in these EV space that are very disappointing. Uh, Fisker is very disappointing. If you look at two names that could have really, really ran, um, Fisker actually is a real company. Very disappointing. Had that one big run with EV and it just did nothing the same. Uh, FUV is also in, the, uh, also in the EV space. I really like this... Uh, the channel here never got up there. I'm still watching this thing, but it was very, very weird how it didn't really follow through. So it never got to the channel that we were looking at. Uh, PLTR went absolutely uh, out of its mind. Uh, $28 needs to build. Uh, 20, so 20, just, just follow me here. 2830s was first supply. That was the initial move. And then it reclaimed that, went to 2930s, right? And then 30s in the next stop. It took out 30s and PLTR... Da, 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 da. It just went to 32 and change. I still like it. I, it this probably looks like uh, a 52-week high test coming up uh, in the next day or so. I believe they come out with earnings, the f not this week, I think the following Thursday. Please double check. Uh, but this is a perfect, a perfect case of if it opens up red and test the bottom 60-minute channel, you, you have to, you almost have to buy the stock there uh, and watch the potential move to red to green. And if it takes out the 52-week highs, look how much room you have, 36, 38. So there's a lot of potential on uh, PLTR as well. Um, and I believe that was it. So, you know, this week I, I am looking at names uh, like a Zoom. It might not be sexy. It might not be obvious. But if, if certain things happen, you know, ZM is going to light up like all these other stocks. Beyond, you know, maybe it doesn't go Monday, maybe it doesn't go Tuesday, but this whole range is building very, very nicely. Uh, Tesla, everybody, again, everybody's watching Tesla, right? Everybody's watching it for this range here, but there's a couple of channels that if it confirms, maybe we could steal 5 $7 before, quote unquote, the retail crowd uh, moves in as well. So there's a lot of value coming up this week, but the key is stay grounded, you know, turn off social media, you know, all the talking heads and the opinions and the booms and the wows and the Wall Street bets and the, you know, this one and that one. Just just concentrate on being the best you you can possibly be. At the end of the day, it's process over everything. Guys, God bless. Have an awesome weekend. May God continue to bless you in all your journeys. And with God's help, I'll see you all on Monday. Take care, everybody.